Today, we're gonna try and fix the 5070 Founders Edition. So I wanted to get this video out because I believe the Founders Edition is coming out later this month. And for those of you that do happen to pick one up, uh, and she's very noisy, what can you do to fix it? Now, for those of you that saw my 5070 review video, you guys know that my Founders Edition here, in particular, runs very loud. So then the goal of this video is very simple. Can we take this card and this Founders Edition cooler and improve it to improve the noise levels? Now, the first and easiest solution is to just undervolt the card. When you undervolt the card, it pulls less power, pulls less heat, and then it runs cooler, obviously. So undervolting aside, we're not gonna do that in this video. I cover all that in the PC Optimization Masterclass. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go upstairs, get a stock number with the power limit slider and the voltage slider all the way to the right, see how hot this thing runs, and then we're gonna disassemble the card and see if we can mod the cooler somehow to make it run cooler. Okay, so we've got the 5070 up and running here. We did a max overclock on it, and I have looped it in, um, in Port Royal here for about 10 loops there. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah, there we go, 10 loops. But, so the cooler is saturated now, and we're at about 74 Celsius, around 255 watts. And the fan speed is about 2,510 RPM, 51% fan speed. Now, the interesting thing here is the air coming out of the right side of the card is significantly warmer than the one that's coming through the blower here. Which I don't know why. There might be there might be something going on with the design here. Like this side is doing this side is doing most of the work right and then if i put my hand on the back plate here it is nice and hot so the, the back plate here is hotter than the air coming out of the blower so something something's going on with this side of the 5070 so yeah it's actually kissing 75 76 watts in the really high power draw spots of this benchmark so peak temperature is about 76. all right so we got our base numbers now let's pull this thing apart and see what we got going under the hood okay so let's pull off the io bracket first there we go oh yeah look at this this thing pops right out that's strange it's it's like uh so this is like actually for purely cosmetic reasons. It actually feels plastic. So you know what? I'm actually curious to see if just removing this thing makes a difference because you could just put the IO bracket back on and it still does maintain your warranty. Let's go try. Nah, okay. Didn't really do anything. It did reduce the, uh, the fan RPM by about 40 RPM. So that is something, but it's it's more like... The air coming out of here is still cold, but it does. I do feel increased airflow though, so that is nice. But yeah, it's just we got we got to we got to dig deeper in there. Okay, so the disassembly here was basically identical to the 5080, just a few more screws on the right here. But when you take this off, yeah, kind of the same deal as the 5080 as well. There's a lot of room here for thermal pads that they just didn't use, so. You could absorb a lot more heat from the rear of the core here by just loading this whole area up with thermal pads. And here we go. Nice. Yeah, the, the thermal pad situation here is much better than the 5080. So at first glance here, it doesn't look like there's any reason why it would cool so poorly. It literally could just be like the old dry paste. But upon further inspection here, it looks like actually that none of the heat pipes actually go into these this side of the fin stack. All the heat pipes are directed towards this side over here, right? So actually, if that's the case, then there's nothing you can really do about it. So all the heat from the pipes are going to go towards this side of the cooler. 
and then that would explain why the air coming out of this side is so cold. So other than maybe a repaste and a thermal pad loading, there's not much more we can do here. So let's go ahead and do that then. Let's Fitz polish the copper first to make it nice and good for fresh paste. So for those of you that watched my 5070 review video, you know that my particular one here has a lot of coil wine. So while the card is disassembled here, we can go ahead and fix the coil wine as well. I'm gonna record that step-by-step -step process right now off camera, and then I will be including that in the PC Optimization Masterclass. It's my gift to everyone who bought the course, and as a thank you for supporting the channel. Okay, so now that the repaste is done, the only other thing that we can do to try and drop the temperatures is load up this back plate with as many thermal pads as possible. So the center here seems like a no-brainer right behind the GPU core, right? So what you're gonna need to do is just put some thermal pads down, place the back plate on, see if it makes contact. If not, keep adding more or use a thicker one if you have it. All right, there we go. I loaded this shit up. I mean, hopefully it does something, right? If we can just reduce the temperature by like three or four Celsius, that would dramatically reduce the fan speed overall, right? That's the only goal here. And there we go. She is all back together. Now I left this little grill thing off for now, just cause I want to see what the maximum thermal benefit will be, just like it is. Okay, so we're back and yeah, no difference. So it's actually back to stock. So actually, it's actually a little bit worse than if we just removed the grill. So that's interesting. So after all that, we made zero improvement. It's interesting because the, uh, the back plate back here is actually significantly hotter. So the thermal pads that I did add are extracting heat to it, but there's no airflow back here. So the heat actually isn't going anywhere anyway. So that proved to be pretty fruitless. So that's actually unfortunate. There is nothing you can do to improve the noise and cooling capacity of the 5070 Founders Edition cooler. That's really unfortunate. Okay, so as a last attempt, I just wanted to try some undervolting results here. Now, I undervolted the card from uh, 1,090 millivolts to 1,050 millivolts. We didn't lose any clock speed at all. And we dropped the power usage by about 20 watts. Not too much, just a little bit. But that resulted in about 2, 3 Celsius less on the GPU. And then about 120 RPM less on the fans. So it's much more bearable, right? Yeah, much more bearable. So I would actually undervolt it a tad more and I would try and go for like 2300 RPM on those fans and then you got your sweet spot. The bright side is the Blackwell architecture overclocks and undervolts so well that even if you do have a card that is quite loud, you won't lose any performance. If you undervolt it, it just takes a little bit of FAFO. So if you do happen to get a 5070 Founders Edition later this month, and it tends to be quite a bit noisy, then my recommendation is to just take out this little grill thing, put it back in the box for resale later, that improves it a little bit, and then I would also make sure that your case, the PCIe slots, as you saw in the 5070 video, make sure nothing is obstructing the exhaust port on the 5070. Other than that, I wouldn't touch it at all. There are no improvements to be made by taking this thing apart. Your only choice after that is undervolting. So then, yeah, my original recommendation is still valid. I would try to get an AIB model if you can, an MSRP one if they exist, obviously. So that's the thing, right? The Founders Edition is MSRP. So even if it is loud, that's still better than spending 900 on an AIB model. It just doesn't make any sense right now in the current landscape of the marketplace, right? So, you know, you get the MSRP one, you undervolt it, don't have to worry about the noise too much, right? But if you can get an AIB one for MSRP, maybe like the Prime or the Shadow or something like that, that might be the better route to go. Again, at this point between the AIBs and between Newegg and between all the scalpers, 
You don't know what you're getting in the marketplace anymore. It doesn't mean the Founders Edition is a bad card. It's just got some strange design choices, like no heat pipes going to this side of the cooler. It's basically a single fan cooler. What you could actually try that I just thought of that I didn't get a chance to test today, if your card is in like this, you could put like a 90 millimeter exhaust fan on top to blow air up to help this fan kind of exhaust the heat. And then that might reduce the noise too. I'd rather try that than buy a $900 AIB model, but I hope you learned something. Anyway, if you like content like this, hit the subscribe button, join the Discord, become a supporter, grab the course, support the channel in any way that you can, and I will see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.